Lane's Bakery. Are you here for the fresh donuts? They're always best first thing in the morning. Right out of the oven. So tender and juicy. Do you love donuts? I love donuts. I love everything sweet and fluffy. That's why I started the Kids Town Bakery. Obviously, I'm so excited. You can join us this month as we explore some culinary creations and edible experiments. That's right, it's a bake-off. And we're taking on some tasty challenges as we find out what it means to have patience. So that is our life app for March. It says patience is waiting until later for what you want now. I know it can be super hard to wait for something when you want it right now. That's why you've got to sprinkle in some patience, <sighs> especially when you bake. Raise your hand if you've ever baked something. I bet a lot of you have helped your mom and dad, your grandma or another adult in the kitchen. And let me ask, do you just dump a bunch of ingredients in the bowl at random, like a little bit of this and a little bit of that? or? Do you measure everything very carefully? Right. It's important to get the measurements just right when you bake. And that takes uh, some patience. Now, I don't know how many times I've dumped too much salt or vanilla in a cake and it's come out yucky. One time when I was a kid, I was in a big hurry. I wanted chocolate chip cookies, so I made a double batch of chocolate chip cookies and I dumped in cups instead of tablespoons of baking soda. Ugh, double yuck. It was so disgusting. And my mom wasn't very happy with me for wasting all those ingredients. I never made that mistake again. See, each week this month, you're not only going to be learning about patience, and why it's important to God that we learn to wait patiently, which is not easy for us, but you're also gonna learn how to make something delicious in the kitchen each week. Something kids can make with a little help. Let's go to the Kids Town Kitchen with my friend Aurora for a segment we call Kids Can Cook. <laughs> is a war and welcome to my show kids can cook each week we will be learning together as we make recipes that kids can do with a little help when we cook we learn lots of things like math following directions and patience when we cook it's never good to be in a hurry that's when we can most likely mess up and when we have to wait for things to bake or even cool down that's when we have to show patience Today we are going to make something amazing. I like to go ooey cooey cookie cake. This, the recipe for this cake is located in the description of this video. You can also pick up the recipe card at the kids table on Sundays at our Gilroy services. For now I'll tell you what you need in case you want to make it along with me. If you want to pause the video and go gather everything, you can. Here's what you'll need. First, you need to have a measuring cup, two mixing bowls, one for wet ingredients and one for dry, a big spoon, a rubber spatula, a mixer, a set of measuring spoons, some cooking spray like Pam, a nine inch cake pan or a pie dish. And don't forget the oven. In fact, you may want to start preheating the oven now and have an adult help you set the oven to 350 degrees, so it will be all ready by the time we finish mixing our ingredients. Now for our list of ingredients. Softened unsalted butter, brown sugar, two eggs, vanilla extract, flour, cornstarch, baking soda, salt, and most importantly, semi-sweet chocolate chips. Also, if you want some ice cream for the top, you can grab some powdered sugar for that. Yum!
word, we are going to mix all the ooey gooey parts first. In the mixing bowl, you get to beat the butter for one minute till it's smooth. We are using three fourths of a cup. That's one stick and half a stick. If you don't know how long a minute is, use a kitchen timer to set to one minute. Most ovens have a timer. Time for beating butter. Now we add the sweet. One cup packed brown sugar. Beat it for one minute. Now we get to add in our eggs. The recipe calls for one whole egg and one egg yolk. That's just the yellow part. Do you know how to crack an egg? I love doing this. I like to do it in, into another bowl first. So if I get eggshells, it's easy to get them out before it gets into my batter. Fun fact. Did you know the best way to scoop out broken eggshells is to actually use an eggshell? Now let's dump in the egg. Take your measuring spoon and measure two teaspoons of vanilla. A teaspoon is much smaller than a regular old spoon. When you look at measuring spoons, it's the one that says TSP, not TBS. That one is a tablespoon. Kids get those confused and lot when cooking. For our vanilla, we need two of the tips. Now let's beat again till it's all really good and mixed together. Now we mix up our dry stuff. Some things need to get mixed together while they're all dry. Otherwise, you might get a whole bunch of one ingredient all globbed up in one part of the batter, and it doesn't get spread around to do its job. In our dry bowl, we dump in two cups of flour. Be careful, you don't want a big poof of flour just going everywhere. Now we need two teaspoons, or tisps of cornstarch and one teaspoon of baking soda. Now we get an even tinier spoon, a half teaspoon, and fill it with salt. Stir all your dry ingredients together really well. Now we carefully add them a little bit at a time to our ooey gooey bowl. And now for the star ingredient of this recipe, chocolate chips! <laughs> Let's put them in, but save a few for the top. Now we get to spray our pan and put our batter into it. Don't get crazy with the spray. Not too close and not too far away. We don't want to get grease on the whole counter, or even worse, the floor. It's super slippery. Now let's put our batter in. Now let's use our spatula so that way we can get every little bit. Now let's put this bad boy into the oven and set the timer for 20 minutes. Yep, you heard me. 20 long minutes of glorious smells and waiting patiently. And as you wait, here's a question to think about. When is it hard to have patience? Talk about that with the person who is helping you bake today. For now, let's get back to see what's happening in Kids Town. By the time Miss Janine finishes our Bible story for today, it will be time to feast on ooey gooey cookie cake! <laughs> Awesome, Aurora. I cannot wait to eat that goodness. <sighs> I'm going to have to be patient while I smell that baking in the Kids Town Bakery. <sighs> and before we get into our story today, like she said, first we have a new song to learn. We're just going to put the video on and we're going to learn with these amazing people our new song about patience for the month of March. So just get on your feet and get into it. You got this. to wait for all the things that I want Sometimes I kind of feel like it's just taking too long To get the things I want What I think I need But I know you know what's best for me I'm gonna live what I believe I'm gonna wait Cause I know you're still working 
trust that you're working it out I'm gonna hold up, slow down I'm gonna trust that you're working it out Like I said, it's March, a new month. Such a great month with all those hints of spring, warm weather comes back, everything's in bloom, we're breaking out our shorts again. And let's be honest, last year, the month of March was insane. Talk about March madness. That's when everything first shut down with COVID-19, remember? <sighs> Feels like it was like 10 years ago, doesn't it? Everything shut down, can't see friends, bathing and hand sanitizer, and we're still dealing with it. And if the pandemic taught us one thing, it was how to have patience. That and how to go to the bathroom with no toilet paper because everybody bought all of it and stored it in their garages. Oh, craziness, right? So we've had to learn to be patient. Quick question. Does anybody totally love waiting for things? Do any of you just totally love to wait? Yeah, that's what I thought. Waiting can be the worst. Pretty much everyone seems impatient these days. Someone's always freaking out about something, right? Wi-Fi doesn't download your show fast enough, so you start yelling and accusing your brother of something he didn't do. I bet some of you even get mad when your clothes don't go on right. You're trying to put your jeans on, you're in a big hurry, and you accidentally put both legs in one hole and pfft, fall over. Right? Come on, admit it. I know you've done it at least once. We've all done it. So let me ask you, what makes you the most impatient? For me, it's driving. People too slow, people not using their turning signals, People driving in that imaginary lane in the middle of the highway? <sighs> Sometimes I get so impatient trying to get around them, especially when I'm in a hurry. And it seems like every time I'm late for something, I catch every single red light. Patience. Waiting. Being calm. Even though you really want something to happen and it isn't happening as fast as you want it to. <sighs> now more than ever, things seem to happen in an instant, too, and that doesn't help us. I mean, when someone sends a text, they expect you to answer them right away. And some of you can't even wait 20 seconds for the loading screen on a game without getting antsy. Right? Am I right? <sighs> and all these instant connections can make us incredibly impatient when life isn't so instant. We want what we want, and we want it now! And waiting, it can be the worst. And with that in mind, let's dive into our Bible story. Now that you're all angsty with me, it's about, you guessed it, someone who had to wait. In fact, it's about someone who might have been waiting his entire life to see something happen. He was getting near the end of his life and it hadn't happened yet. In fact, he hadn't seen a thing like this yet. This man's name was Simeon, which, by the way, happens to be my dad's name. That's right. In my whole life, I've never met another man named Simeon besides my dad and this guy. His story is written in the book of Luke. So get comfy and watch this Lego animation about a man who knew how to wait and 
was rewarded for it. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord, help me understand your law. Help me serve you with my whole life. Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him, and one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade? We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. A temple courtyard? I I'm on my way. Uh, where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's spirit led Simeon straight up to the temple mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage, the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly. May I hold the child? <laughs> Well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. Simeon must have trusted God a lot because he had to wait a long time to see God's promise come true. 
And sure enough, God came through in the end. It just goes to show that God always keeps his promises. No matter what you have to wait for, God is always with you. You can trust him while you're waiting, just like Simeon did. In fact, you can trust God no matter what. You can trust God when you have to wait for something little, like your grandma tells you not to snack so you won't ruin your dinner. <clears throat> you can also trust God when you're waiting for something big, like your new baby sister to be born, or maybe you have a broken arm or a broken leg and you're waiting for that to heal, or your mom and dad need to find a new job and you're just waiting and waiting for things to happen. He's also with you, though, when you have to wait for something you don't even want to do. Like, maybe you have a big test coming up, or mm, a dentist appointment after eating all those sweets. Waiting for those things can make you nervous and anxious, but God will always be with you, even when you're waiting. So don't forget to pray. When you're anxious and when you're impatient, you can always stop to pray. And that's something we should never forget. Our bottom line for today says, when you have to wait, remember God is with you. In fact, let's pray right now and ask God to help us do that. Dear Lord, we come to you asking you to help us be better waiters. <laughs> we want to confess to you that we get impatient and we want things now. But God, I know you use time to teach us things that we could never learn in an instant. So God, help us all to remember to be more patient and to wait and to trust you with the outcome. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So our memory verse this month reminds us what we can do when we have to wait. It's something David wrote in Psalm 27, verse 14. Obviously, he had the same issue, learning to wait. And he says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. He had to say wait two times, once at the beginning and once at the end. And speaking of waiting, hey, should we get back in with Aurora in the Kids Town Kitchen? Oh, the smells in here are glorious. That cake's got to be done. Let's go see. Is it ready yet, Aurora? Yep, would you like <gasps> some frosting on it? Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh, that looks delish. Ooh, are you gonna put frosting on yours too? Yeah. <gasps> I love frosting, you can never have enough frosting. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh it? my goodness, here, I'll do mine. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I can't wait to try this. I hope my friends at home made one. Cheers! Cheers! Mm -mm. Mm. Oh. There you have it, my friends. Remember to show patience this week because some things are worth the wait. See you, See you next, next week! week.